Alright, so in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to model hair and eyebrows. Um, it's a little bit similar to other methods I've used, and I'll try to explain it as we go along. With the eyebrows, I just kind of cut the shape I want. I'm trying to make sure that I'm thinking about how they could be animated when I cut them. For instance, there's a line going through the corner of the eyebrow. I imagine she could raise that or lower it to be more expressive. And here I am selecting everywhere I would imagine her hair would be if she had a shaved head. I find that that's the easiest place to start. I wanted her hair to be black, but it's really hard to model with black hair, at least at the beginning, so I make it white so I can just see the polygons for now. I'll change that later, so don't worry. <laughs> be a little strange if I didn't. Um, and here I'm just fixing up the face a little. So what you're going to see me do in a second here is I'm going to select all of the polygons from what I call her shaved head, and then I'm going to extrude them out. Yeah, okay. And so from this point, it's kind of like an afro. I start a lot of my models this way because it helps me visualize their hair in a 3D space as opposed to just being shaved against their head. From here, you have a lot of freedom. You can extrude it downwards to make long hair. You can keep it as an afro. You can make it spiky. I'm going to try and go for a dreadlock ponytail, something I've never made before, but uh, it's an interesting process and I think you'll like it. I ended up liking the result quite a bit. So the first thing I do is I'm just making sure all of my faces are facing the right way, that they look good. It will save you a lot of aggravation later. If with low poly, you have to be extremely precise and kind of finicky and adjusty. It's just it's the name of the game here. So I'm making sure that it's really round on her head, that it looks like it fits her. And then I'm going to start extruding large blocks where I imagine her ponytail would be. It's all right if at the beginning it doesn't look a lot like a ponytail. For me, it's all about the shape. I can imagine it's a bun, perhaps. And then once you've got the shape you like, you can start extruding from that shape. It's all about going from large shapes to small shapes, as it is with almost any artistic practice. And so from here, I just selected particular polygons that I felt uh, kind of mirrored symmetrically, but also looked natural. I'm still working with mirror on, so I have to make sure it still looks good when her ponytail lumps are you know, exactly the same, because that can look really awkward. And so you just pick a square and you just press E and you extrude outwards. And here I extruded downwards to give it more length and I extruded on the underside to give it more fluffiness. From here, it's, it's starting to develop. You can start to see the shape. I'm tapering the ends of each of her ponytail bits to try and give it some more life, to kind of make it feel a little bit more like hair. I tend to really like modeling hair as kind of like a blocky chunk because individual strands never work for low poly. Um, it's really easy to UV map hair that's in chunks. And here I'm just making sure that her ponytail is slightly disconnected from her head, so if I ever wanted to animate her hair bobbing, I wouldn't have a problem doing so. And here I'm... Oh, yeah, here I am going to try and give her some kind of... kind of a cor uh, cornrow... I think that's what it's called. Um, dreadlock going backwards to try and give her hair a little bit more... a little more realism. And so I cut into her hair and colored it her scalp color. And then I kind of pushed down the spots where it was extruded so it looked like it was part of her head still. You've got a little bit of flexibility because this is low poly and because you're using materials. It's not so obvious. That's a, one of the reasons I really like low poly as well because you can add details like this and they look totally natural. Here I am adding another. In a little bit, you'll see me extrude these uh, strands upwards. They look more 3D, but that will come in just a second. For now, I'm just making sure that they have the right shape, that their silhouette looks good, that um, none of her hair is connected to the back of her ear. You want to make sure that's really solid. There are a lot of things in low poly that need to be really solid, and some things you can just kind of, you know, wing it on. I'm sure you'll find out as you go along. And so now I'm just giving her neck a little bit of darkness so it distinguishes from her face. And here I am extruding the strands upwards, and I am giving them a darker color than the rest of her hair, so it stands out like a shadow. I tend to really like to do this, even if you're going to use a shader in Unity or whatever you 
plan to use that has its own shadows. Um, I like to add sort of like, they're, they're like ambient occlusion shadows where uh, there's an edge or a very small darkness. Like that way it can stand out more strongly in the game and you don't have to rely on the shader to define edges like that for you. And here I am just uh, distinguishing the blocks of hair from the mound of hair itself. I'm coloring the back and underside of the hair. I'm coloring underneath each of the strands. I'm coloring the tips. This way from the back, you can really see the difference and it really makes a difference in the long run. I do this with almost all of my hair. I try and find the underside of the chunks because I feel like the light would most naturally fall come from above in most games. And here I am just giving her a little hairband. I just colored some of the polys that were already there, found the best shape a hairband would go in, and then I kind of adjusted a little bit according to that. I just colored in pink. I haven't extruded anything yet. Here I am just adjusting the strands a little bit more, trying to make sure the silhouette is exactly where I want it. And I have to be really careful with the hairband because it is a very noticeable shape. The more noticeable the shape is, the more careful you have to be with its silhouette because it will stand out very strongly in the game. And that's its purpose. I'm trying to use larger details because this model will be seen from far away. And here, um, <laughs> diverging from the hair a little bit, as I do, just gonna give her some iris some colors. And I'm also adjusting the shape of her face. Just a little bit of fidgeting here and there. And I'm one last time going over the hair in the back, making sure it's all the shapes are tapered and have nice chunk, uh, that the hairband is a good shape. And here I'm gonna be adding a little bit of bow to her hairband. And so I just extruded up in a square and then I extruded outwards and again to try and get a little bit of a bow shape kind of like a trapezoid and then I loop cut around it and thickened it. We're almost done here. Um, the next video will cover her clothes so stay tuned. You can see I've already started to mess with them. <laughs> Alright I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.